So we continue our trek north and uh, we're in the Karajani. Decided we pop in for a couple of days um, and just kill a couple of days. <laughs> we're running a bit ahead of schedule at the moment. So uh, yeah, just jumped online. There was um, a bunch of sites available. So um, so we just booked and the same thing. We had to book one night in one site and then just move sites. But beauty of the caravan it took us five minutes. So um, so we're here for another day. It's looking a little bit ominous. The uh, forecast is for a little bit of rain to come in on Sunday and Monday. Um, so we're just trying to plan where we want to be Sunday, Monday to be out of the rain. We were going to head up to Marble Bar and camp at Dulane Gorge. We might still do that. We'll just see see what the forecast is. Um, the other plan, if that doesn't work out, is we might run up to 80 Mile. So at least at 80 Mile Beach, you're out of the red dirt just on the sand and they've got a bit of grass up there um we believe it's not that busy at 80 mile at the moment and uh, we'll just kill a couple of days up there before we move up to anna plains see so how we go we'll like, go up to the visitor center get some uh reception up there and just have a look see what the forecast is uh yeah so there we go so i won't bore you with any photos of karajini there's about 200 million karajini videos on YouTube so um, if everyone's seen that before but if you haven't been to Karajini before you got to come it is a truly spectacular place absolutely amazing and the flies are gone which was amazing like then our last night at um, Newman at the caravan park there was hardly any flies and then uh, here at Karajini none at all which is wonderful wonderful because they were certainly plentiful as we're a little bit further south Okay, oh, and by the way, the Newman Caravan Park, it's not really a caravan park, it's really just a caravan layover area, is really good, really nice and secure, beautiful, clean facilities. Um, they've got powered and unpowered sites, and they've even got a few grassy sites there if you're in a tent. Um, but yeah, it's only relatively new, I believe, but it's um, it was good. Yeah, it was no problems at all. Just a little bit out of town to keep you out of trouble, um, but not a bad stopover at all. Um, you need to book on the website jump online you can book a site there um, just google it you'll find it oh yeah looks like we're almost ready to go well we just endured the drive between the uh, Karajini Visitor Center and the uh, gorges at the Savannah end the western end of that road it is one of the worst roads in Western Australia. It's an absolute embarrassment to uh, WA Tourism to be promoting the Karajini as much as they do and have the road in that condition. It's appalling, absolutely appalling. Why they haven't bitumized it, I have no idea, but they need to do something because it's not a good road. There's a car actually, four wheel drive, that must have rolled over there um, on the side of the road. So uh, somebody's come to grief there, and I'm not surprised. It's a shocking road, absolute shocking. So Western Australian government, bitumise that bit of road. It's just terrible that the Karajeni, one of Western Australia's probably top three attractions, has a road like that in the uh, in the middle of the national park. Awful. Need to do something about anyway, it. Anyway, anywho. Okay, you got that, Mark McGowan? If you can look after that for me, that would be great. Is Mark still here? <laughs> still here. <laughs> One of us is braver than the other. We're at Knox Gorge in Karajin. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's a really overcast day and there's no sunlight on this pool at all, so it will be freezing. So here it goes. Here we go. What's it like? Don't believe you somehow. How'd you go? It's just beautiful. You coming in? No. Well, big day. <clears throat> Eight hours on the road today. So we left Karajini this morning at nine o'clock, just after nine o'clock, quarter past I think it was. Just pulled up here at the De Grey River 24 hour campsite along with probably 50 other caravans. It's chockers here. Well, it's not chockers, there's tons of room. There's a lot of people here. 
So we just pulled up here, it's just on five o'clock, so um, so it's a big day on the road. We're all running from the rain. We're all trying to get out of the Pilbara floodplains. <clears throat> so we were going to stop down at Marble Bar at Dulina Gorge, or um, what was the other one on the river? Yeah, that one, just before Dulina Gorge anyway. Coffin. And, um, but the forecast is for up to 45 mils of rain tomorrow and up to 75 mils of rain on Monday and it's just starting to sprinkle now. So there's a lot of rain on the way. So we thought, just looking at the uh, at the terrain down there, there's a lot of rivers and a lot of floodplains, and I thought um, there's every possibility that we'll get flooded in if we stay in that area. So we thought, let's head for the coast and um, see if we can get to 80 Mile Beach tomorrow sometime. Hopefully not with 50 other people that are here today. Um, yeah, and we'll sit out Sunday, Monday, uh, at 80 mile because at least it's a bit grassy there a bit sandy you're not stuck in the red dirt which is the last place you want to be when the rain's falling down so so anyway we'll um spend the night here on the de Grey river which is a really lovely campsite really and then we might get going early in the morning and get up to 80 mile early i think try and make sure we get ourselves a spot <laughs> we'll see how we go we might have uh, breakfast at 80 mile i think pack up and shoot through at seven o'clock or something if I can get Lisa out of bed at that time, you can just stay in bed. I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you out of here. <laughs> anyway, it's time for a, uh, a refreshing drink and try and de-stress. Because certainly driving for eight hours on those Pilbara roads behind all those big trucks and things is uh, is not easy. It um, takes a uh, takes a lot of concentration. But anyway, we made it. Cheers. 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 Hopefully the rain will stay off till we finish dinner. <laughs> well, well. We are at the beautiful 80 mile beach caravan park. Some days it might be beautiful, but today is not one of those days. So uh, you might have seen we were out running a uh, big rain depression, came in over the Pilbara coast and um, absolutely drowned the area between Onslow and um, pretty much Port Hedland really and uh, we were down at um, Marble Bar and we did, we're actually just going to set up camp for the night on one of the rivers just out of Marble Bar and we turned and we turned on the radio and uh, heard the weather warning where they're saying that if you camped in a river or near a river in the Pilbara get out so we took their advice and uh, we made our uh, a quick dash up here to 80 mile so that we could be at least somewhere where there was a little bit of grass uh, when the rain set in which it has done that's us just there the grass is getting a good water today but uh, it's been pretty well consistently raining now most of today it's meant to ease up tonight and uh, tomorrow just turn back into showers so we just hunkered down for a couple of days I'll uh, put some pictures in that show you the sky yesterday afternoon when we arrived of this big um, big storm cell that uh, moved in. It was uh, quite amazing, really quite spectacular sky. But anyway, you're going to get it sooner or later when you're travelling. You're going to get crap weather and uh, hopefully this is our share of it. We'll try and get back across the moat now to get back to the caravan. Got to love this Kimberley red soil when it rains. <laughs> So Lisa's in here just doing a little bit of a clean-up. We did a um, pretty corrugated road between um, Karajeni and um, bum, 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 Marble, Bar. Marble Bar, that's it. Karajeni and Marble Bar. So it was only a couple of hundred kilometres, but um, it was a lot, a lot worse than we remember it to be. <laughs> it was pretty corrugated. Um, we went for about half an hour or so without letting the tyres down. Big mistake. We say it all the time, just stop and let the tyres down. 
Anyway, we persisted for about half an hour and then we decided we'd let the tyres down and uh, it just makes such a difference. But anyway, in the half an hour or so that we didn't have soft tyres, uh, we did a little bit of damage to the grocery department, to the pantry. Pantry. So uh, we split open a packet of cocoa and a packet of custard powder. <laughs> I don't even know why I have, because I've never even had custard. Probably for making custard. I think you put it in scones at one stage, didn't you? I don't know. Anyway, so that made a mess under the uh, under the sofa. And uh, we can always tell because when we open the door after we've been on bumpy roads and there's just powder all over the floor, it's a fairly good uh, indicator that something's split <laughs> and we've got some cleaning up to do. But anyway, that job is almost done. So what we've done now, we've got everything packed into um, wine boxes. I don't know why we have a lot of empty wine boxes around. Yeah. Anyway, packed into empty wine boxes to give them a little bit of protection. And now we've actually put a plastic bag in the wine box before we put the stuff in it to try and um, contain it a little bit. And now it's great. Yeah. So this is our pantry down here. Our little pantry. You see the purple plastic Excess bags there. The anyway, so lesson learned. If you've got, seems like the powdered stuff bursts. I don't know whether the vibrations or whatever it is, or whether it's stuff just banging into it, but the packets seem to split. So things like flour. But they were in a packet in a plastic bag. Yeah, but they still, still they still cop the impact, or whether they were bouncing around. I don't know. We're not sure. But anyway, seems like all that packaged powder stuff. So custard powder, cocoa, flour. We've all had the packets burst. So uh, lesson learned from all of that, we're going to buy some containers that we can um, put the packets in the plastic containers when we store them. And hopefully we won't have that problem. But anyway, we'll just get the dishes done and then we're going to play a little bit of uh, hide and seek in the van. <laughs> no sexual connotation. <laughs> we're trying to think of games to play. We're trying to think of games to play to kill the time. I said to Lisa, why don't we play hide and seek? <laughs> Oh well, I might just lay down and read a book again. See so, how we go. down to the beach and uh, hopefully today we will break our thready drought it's only been going for two years day two down here at Anna Plains and uh, that's about the same number of fish that we've caught too in fact they've been mostly catfish a couple of sharks so it hasn't been particularly successful strangely enough so our uh, record for uh, fishing continues. Our appallingly bad record for fishing continues. But anyway, it's uh, a receding tide now. So the tide's on the way out. And the threadies we've caught previously have both been on the outgoing tide. So there's still hope. Lisa's assumed the relaxed position. Seems to be how a lot of people fish for threadies cast the line out, pull up a deck chair and sit there and wait. But there's been a few around. We saw um, some yesterday um, being chased by big sharks. You know, when I say big sharks, I mean like three metres plus. 
street, he's jumping out of the water trying to get away from them. And then the guy in the caravan just down from us caught one yesterday that was 1 metre 180. So uh, 1180, which was an absolute monster. And apparently there's about three others caught in the campground yesterday. So they are around. They're just not around our lines. But anyway, we won't give up just yet. There's still hope. Got about four hours before this tide's gone out too far. Don't know if we'll last four hours, but anyway, we'll see. Lifting fingers every now and then to uh, just wade out and have a bit of a dip. But um, the water's very murky. You can see like two centimetres into it. And we're just waiting. There's a big shark just in front of us here somewhere. Um, probably three metres plus. And he would be he's just cruising up and down in probably no more than knee deep water. Well, that's the end of day two. Lisa had hooked one. I'm pretty sure it was a thready. Jumped out of the water. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Jumped out of the water. But anyway, uh, a little bit unsuccessful. Lots of sharks, lots of caddies. But uh, a no big shark. Oh, Very got big a shark. Really nice shark. So anyway, we'll uh, call that a day, I think. Time to go back and put the kettle on and have a nice cuppa. And uh, write up the report for the Vegans Fishing Club of WA. I uh, apparently have become the self-appointed president of the Vegan Fishing Association. But anyway, tomorrow is another day. Plug's not in. Lise, plug. There's the plug. Big day fishing today, so we need to uh, soak our aching bones from uh, casting a lot, not from catching anything. <laughs> so we're at the hot tub. Just popping that up now. The pool chairs in. This has got it all organised. Oh yeah, time to get in. Day three down here at Anna Plains. A little bit of excitement this morning. Someone got a thready. Okay. Insert picture here. That's if she hasn't deleted them off her phone yet. It was only a little while. Well, it was 55, so um, legal size is 45. So it was good enough. We'll get a couple of good fillets off that. But there's been plenty of catfish action. Some big sharks cruising up and down here. And um, Lots of these shovel nose rays. They are just thousands of these shovel nose sharks or shovel nose rays. Oops. Tide's coming in. Better save the coffee. Here's one of these um, shovel nose rays. This one's a little bit bigger. Probably two and a bit feet long. And so what they do, they swim in as the wave comes in. See his fins just there. Oh, I spooked him. But it's um, quite exciting. You're standing there in ankle deep water, just wiggling your toes in the sand, and next thing you look down, there's one sitting right at your feet. And because you can see about, as you can see, you can see about two centimeters into this water. And that's one of the reasons you would never go swimming at this beach here or down at 80 miles, uh, 80 mile at the caravan park. There are some big sharks cruising up and down these waters in really skinny water, like literally no more than knee deep water and there's sharks that are six or seven feet long cruising up and down here and you just can't see them. It's not until their fins break the surface that you spot them. I've got some video I'll uh, drop in and show you what I mean, but it's very tempting to go and have a little dip, but you just don't want to do it because you never know what's lurking out there. As I said, there are some big sharks cruising up and down here. 
Okay. Oh, looks like another move. Tide is on the way in. Literally comes 10 metres up the beach every five minutes, I reckon. It's quite incredible how fast it comes in. So where Lisa's setting up there is we'll be good there for about three or four minutes and we we'll have to move again. Okay, better do some work. So this is uh, day four down here at Anaplanes. And um, today we've driven 20 kilometres north of um, where the road hits the beach up to the point. They said, um, come up here and have a look. There's a few rocks in the water, which are just out there in front of us. And there were some guys up here yesterday. They got uh, three good threadies and um, a bunch of blue nose, apparently. Apparently. So we're going to have a crack at that. Let's see, um, see if our luck changes. Maybe wait till the water's at the ground. Yeah, once it starts creeping up around those rocks, it won't take long. Ten minutes, it'll be up there. So this is our last day here at um, Anna Plains. It is really a gorgeous place. It's just such a tranquil, peaceful atmosphere. Beautiful to wake up in the morning with the birds. It's just stunning. So we've really enjoyed it, as we always say. It's a great spot. Great spot for fishing. We're not 100% convinced just yet, but there has been some great fish caught. Like the guys, um, I think I mentioned it before, um, guys that we've been talking to a fair bit, they caught one that was um, one meter, 150 centimeters, which is a huge fish. So, and also um, my mate from Perth, Bob, he's down at 80 mile at the moment, sent us a photo boasting. He got one over a meter yesterday as well, down at 80 miles. So, so there's plenty around. We just can't seem to catch them. We haven't got the right We've bait. Got sharks. We've got plenty of sharks. Plenty of sharks. And the uh, cat woman here has been cleaning up on the catfish. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, get organised. We'll wander down to the flats and uh, wait for the water to come up to the rocks. And hopefully get ourselves a fish. See how we go. Rightio, well, that's a wrap, as I say in the classics. A um, little bit of a different episode, that one there, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. From here, we're heading up to the Dampier Peninsula. So we're gonna go back up to, we're actually going to Broome first and restock and Broome. And then from there, uh, up to the Dampier Peninsula, um, back up to Nulmarung for uh, five days, and then on to Pender Bay for another four days as well. So we're really looking forward to that. We might even try and get into a couple of the other campsites up there, just show you what they look like. Um, we haven't seen them yet, so it'll be really interesting to see what it's like up there. So thanks for joining us. Really hope you enjoyed the episode. How's the backdrop? This is Mary Pool, halfway between uh, Halls Creek and Fitzroy Crossing. It's chockers in there. I'll get some footage, but there are so many caravans in there. It's unbelievable. Anyway, uh, once again, thanks for joining us. Really hope you enjoyed that last episode and we'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.